the brand that is closest to what I would do. Uh, it's for the young experimental teenager and for the young woman who likes to dress with Indian roots but at the same time with fusion silhouettes. This is like a kaftan top with a belt so everything has either a block print and inserts on the inside and interesting linings. But we've tried to limit the color palette to basically black, pink, white and yellow. Thank you, Okay, thank you. Thanks. Now I just want to know the result obviously because there's been so much work that's been put into it. So it's a little, uh, it's a little overwhelming. Anything with Vogue stamp on it of course becomes much more credible and at the same time uh, the associations with all the other brands involved at such an early stage in my career will be quite a turning point. Tanvi started off by showing two garments from a spring-summer 2014 line. But what caught everyone's eye was the ombre dye jacket, which she teamed with a digitally printed top and trousers. Distance, I just can't say what is printed and what is embroidered. It's very clever. Her West Side collection consisted of patterns which were very ethnic and inspired by folk embroidery animal motives. I love West Side. Like I shop a lot at West Side personally also. Uh, I'm quite excited if I get to design for them and it because I think my product will just like fly off the racks of them. Tandi created a full-length dress with digital prints and a special scarf incorporating the face of the white tiger for Tigre Blanc. For Micromax, Tanvi produced a four-leather cover in blue and black with a hint of orange to suit the brand's sensibilities. She also etched the letter M to symbolize the brand name. I think it went quite well. They were pretty happy and impressed. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Winning the Vogue Fashion Fund would be like a dream come true. And it's very important mainly because of, uh, you know, the internship, the, the basically the guidance that I could get from the whole panel of judges of how I can take my brand forward. <laughs> Uh, the starting point for this line was uh, missionaries and uh, it's more about colour. The scarf here is again stainless steel. Very nice. This is Tigre Blanc. Uh, I've decided to go with two colours, not use gold. The use of stainless steel along with pure silk in the outfit specially created for Tigre Blanc won him additional brownie points with the judges. For the West Side collection, Gaurav decided to present outfits created using chanderi in three colours and complementing scarves. Three colours. Stunning. Multicolored weaves, solid tones, and simple lines dominated the collection. So, these are, uh, so there are two ideas in this. Uh... Gaurav's cover for Micromax was inspired by sports. His first design was called Micro Yoga, in which he used stick figures doing the Surya Namaskar, while the second was called Shuttlecock. I think it was fun. <laughs> it was uh, quite good, easy, fast. They, the judges really like the ideas. Uh, we get a mentorship, you know, we get a lot of PR. Uh, we get a lot of visibility, there's a Vogue endorsement. Then obviously there's money in it. And it is one of the defining moments if I would probably, let's say, I win it.
you want to tell us a little bit about the what you're showing us today right now what we're trying to do is how to give a sporty character in an Indian way and that's what exactly I showed there Ajit Kumar's capsule collection was backed by his unconventional thinking. His trademark thread work was quite a hit with the judges. He created clothes that were sporty, had zip detailing and spray work, but all bound by an Indian aesthetic. Uh, it's first embroidered in a motif. Uh, after that, it's been sprayed. So it's been sprayed on a wet fabric. So it gives a ikat effect. How would you price? With the peak, both the garments. It was something around 16,000 rupees. What I like about that garment is that you know there's harmony in everything because you know you've used different kinds of fabrics, different kind of textures. It's all tone on tone. Your your surface ornamentation is very very clever and strong. For the West Side collection, Ajit derived his inspiration from technology. I have tried to control my silhouette because I was looking for something which can be mass produced and uh, what I have experimented with is more of a print. His collection consisted of pixelated prints in various forms and colors using intricate design detail. But the jury seems to be left a little confused. The way you picked up and you make, uh, did your silhouettes, I think they are very strong. Mm. Again, I might be wrong, but I just I don't think this is the correct story for you to use. Completely agree. But when I was doing it for this brand, you know, who is already facing so much of competition, I wanted to do a line which I wanted to do as me. For the Tigre Blanc outfit, he created a long flowy black dress. It was minimalistic yet powerful. He also replicated Tigre Blanc stripes through embroidery. I don't think this works for me at all. You've got a very strong hand with pattern. You're very brilliant with your commercial overview of what will sell in a line. Why do you want to lose your DNA? I still think that you should look at solids. Creating a phone jacket was a fun challenge for this designer. His idea is to tie up with well-known Indian artists and print their masterpieces on the phone cover. Because of the commercialism, commercialism I was losing some track somewhere for the website collection. So he just directed me there. What they told me is fantastic. You know, and this you can only hear from people who have experience. collection that I worked on. What I tried to do was to bring in two different elements of carpets and petticoats. So what I tried to do is bring in the soft with the harsh. So I used a lot of um, embroidery techniques and you see a lot of quilting and everything which create heaviness in the fabric. Whereas I use a lot of lace sort of detailing with thread work to create softness to it. Again I made a bunch of separates like you see here. And you made the shoes as well. Yeah. Which are shoes. lovely. Thank you. Oh, is that the skirt is lined like that or the shirt no, is no, no. longer? No, the shirt's longer and yeah. then the skirt's meant to be worn on it. Okay. So the skin won't be shown. Right. Uh, and then the pocket so, And the shirt like, can be worn separately as a dress or as, uh, a, as yeah, a tunic? Yeah, it's, it's not that long to be worn with, as a dress but okay. it has to be worn like with a long tunic skirt. with trousers yeah, or tunic, something. Yeah. Okay. So the skirt, this is completely quilted. So this, this had come up to around 9,500. The shirt is 4,500. So the collection is called a folk tale because it's inspired by old folk tale uh, stories and, and illustrations from the same. 
you'll see a lot of detail within it. You'll see print on print action and you'll see a lot of color. So this is my color palette for the collection. So the collection consists of dresses, jumpsuits, trousers, tops and waistcoats because I like doing tailored. I wanted to do a little bit of that as well. And then I also worked on oversized prints. Stunning, stunning. And you know, she has a good brand story, tells everything. She can put in everything from eyewear to glasses. And then I thought we'll add a bunch of shoes as well to the collection. Nice. In printed fabric, it's just wrapped. This is a Tigre Blanc look. What I wanted to do was stick to the same theme, but create a brand nice. identity to it. It's actually mm. embroidered on a classic satin weave, shirt weight fabric. And to me, when I read about Tigre Blanc, I thought the brand stands for sophistication. So I tried to bring that through by keeping the design very basic and very simple and just let the embroidery do the top. One of the designs was inspired by the inside of a phone. So it was like a blueprint of the technical details of the inside. And the other one was inspired by the Fair Isle sweater. So it was a knit cover made out of wool, so I thought that was pretty interesting. It feels really good, it really boosts a designer's uh, morale by uh, coming to such a platform and winning a uh, fashion fund would uh, mean my label will be on a national level platform and everyone will take notice, so it's more about growth. So the top five have just completed their final presentations. And while the judges seem to be preoccupied with making some critical decisions, the designers are seen doodling away on their Micromax phones. Well, it's all about uh, the brand being, being at the right place at the right time. Uh, as Micromax moves into uh, the lifestyle space, there's no other better brand than Vogue to partner with. There's some great work on our phones. We actually introduced the Canvas Doodle, which is a phone where you can actually sketch your designs out. And they did a pretty good job. Uh, we're pretty impressed with the design. Uh, I think the KD design was very nice. It was very funky, very, very up to the mark. Uh, it somehow collaborated with what, what we think as a brand. We really love that design and hopefully that should, that should help us. Looks like the jury has a winner. But who will that be? You have to wait and watch. Meanwhile, let's see what the jury has to say about the top five. I think it was very hectic uh, and if I look at the top five, I think the important parameters were, uh, you know, creativity, commercial viability, finish, you know, originality of product and also the personality of the designer. I think everything combined makes, makes a great package and that's what we are looking for. Well, it feels good. I wish I had a mentor when I was starting off and I think if, if they can use my services or my advice, it would be lovely because when I come in, I come in with the intention of making sure that I squeeze them to bring out the best super brand in the country in the next years to come. Today when we started, I, mean, I had absolutely no clear uh, idea of who my favourites were. Uh, I love the fact that we all came in with a clean slate and as each contestant came in, it was really great to see, you know, their strength. I think, you know, we have a, a bunch of really, really talented young designers and I have to tell you that the decision has been extremely tough. But I think we have a favourite. When the going gets tough, the designers get going. With that, we've come to the end of another round of the Vogue India Fashion Fund 2013. Before we move ahead, we give you an exclusive sneak peek into the special photo shoot featuring our top five designers. It's been fantastic. Um, it's a different kind of experience altogether. I have just finished my photo shoot and I feel amazing about it. Like to get featured in the Vogue magazine is just like something else. It's a really, really 
very big honor shooting for Vogue and uh, it's a magazine that I've always looked up to. It's very prestigious. It was fun to be in, sitting in, in a box and uh, you know, just having paper all around you because that's the way designers work. I just shot for the Vogue uh, Fashion Fund photo shoot and it was really fun. The team was excellent and the whole decor and everything was so exciting and I'm glad I'm being a part of it. I was really nervous, I'm not really comfortable with cameras but it was a fun experience and by the end of it I calmed down and it was fun. Well, just got over with the photo shoot and I'm really sleepy. I need to knack it really, need to go home and... Welcome back to Vogue India Fashion Fund 2013. After making its debut last year, Vogue India Fashion Fund is back to give centre stage to India's next generation of fashion designers. Now it's time to kickstart the finale of the second edition of the fund that's hosted by leading fashion magazine Vogue India. Before we proceed, time for a very quick recap. In the first round, 19 designers presented three garments that represented their brand. They were grilled and tested in a one-on-one -on -one discussion with the jury and the five best designers qualified for the second round. Where the stakes got higher and the competition stiffer. These five designers have had many a sleepless night putting together dynamic pieces that might earn them critical acclaim and the title of winner. So minutes before the big announcement, let's find out what's running through their minds. Well, we're here now with the top five finalists. Guys, from 19 to 5, how's the journey been? Excellent. It's been pretty exciting. It's been an exciting journey. I think uh, it's, it's finally to the end of it all and uh, we're looking forward to the results and I'm sure everyone here is so deserving so it'll be quite amazing. If you could select one more person who is not part of the top five, who would it be? Cell design. Yeah, cell design. Um, I'd like Bodice to be here. I think that would be Rahul Mishra. What do each one of you think is the edge that you possess? that made you get into the top five? Of course the textiles, bit of what I do, you know, hand looms and uh, they're very contemporary, they're very progressive. The style in which I'm doing the digital printing bit, that's what the judges had to say, that uh, it was really different the way I'm using embroidered textiles, like vintage old embroidered textiles and like bringing it back in terms of print so like everybody can use it, everybody wears it. It's difficult to say what is the edge for me. I mean, I can only say that I love experimentation. The judges saw that, uh, whatever I'm trying to do, and maybe because of that I'm here. I think mainly because my clothes are very wearable and I feel like they're very individualistic to the person who's wearing it and they can